Well, we're at a time when many people are wondering whether we can trust anyone at all. We have banks that aren't trusting other banks. We have individuals who find out that other individuals, respected individuals in our own community, aren't the people who we thought that they were. And so it's easy to just say, well, I'm not going to trust anybody, or maybe I won't trust anybody outside of my immediate family, or I won't trust anybody who's ever given me the slightest reason to think that that, that person is not the most perfect <coughs> person out there. And we can go through life like that, not trusting anybody, but it's very hard to have relationships in that way. And I think about the story of Joseph and his brothers. It's a story that we've been reading in synagogue for the past number of weeks. And Joseph, as you might remember, doesn't have a very good relationship with his brothers. He's the favored son. His father lavishes all sorts of gifts on him. His brothers are very jealous. And Joseph teases his brothers and takes advantage of his position in the family. Eventually, his brothers actually sell him into slavery. Joseph goes down to Egypt as a slave and through a series of events ends up being the second in command of the whole country. And lo and behold, after a little while, there's a famine everywhere in the world because of some protections that Joseph put into place. Egypt has food. His brothers come down to Egypt. They don't recognize him. And Joseph, at this point, one, we might imagine that he would take this, advantage, this, this opportunity as a time to get revenge on his brothers, to take advantage of them, to hurt them in some way. And instead he doesn't. He completely opens himself up to them. He makes himself vulnerable to them. And he's willing to trust them again, and they're willing to trust him again. And this is a family that's been ripped apart, where one member of the family, one group of members of the family actually sold another member of the family into slavery. It's much worse than what happens in most of our families or most of our communities. And somehow they each, all of the brothers, believe that the other party has changed. And in Judaism we have a concept of tshuva, the idea that we always have the chance to make up for what we've done, that every single person, no matter what we might have done in the past, has a chance to start again and to be a new person. Maimonides, the medieval thinker, even says that you know that a person's done complete tshuva when that person says, well, the person who did this horrible thing, that wasn't even me. So there's always a chance to change. And that leads us, I think, to thinking about how we can trust other people, to assuming that other people are trying to do their very best, at least most of the time and to thinking that even if somebody hurts us once, that they have the possibility to change. That's not to say that we should be naive and trust everybody and trust every email that comes to us or every phone call that we get, but it means that, when, that we should start out by assuming that we trust people and that we build communities of trust and know also that there are some moments when it doesn't make sense to trust, but we should lean toward trusting more of the time.